yeah, yeah. I'm living my best life. Made a couple M, you know. Ah! <laughs> so I'm living my best life. I'm living my best life. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel, Random Opinions, Reaction, and Reviews. If you don't know who I am by now, you gotta get with the program. Today, I'm coming to do a review on the episode that just aired on General Hospital. Today's date is July 12th. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So, today we have scenes that open up with Dev and Sunny, and they're in the mob front restaurant, I guess is what you call it. And Dev and Sonny are pretty much getting their story straight. Sonny is coaching him on what to say, the do's and don'ts, what not to say. Um, and he also says, if you want to get this story down and make it believable, you have to know who my enemies are. So he tells him to be on the lookout for Jasper Jacks. And Dev is like, wait, you mean Jocelyn's dad? And he's like, yes, because he will ask questions. He will look around. He will be suspicious. So you have to get your story and your facts in order. Um, Dev says, you know what, if you want to sell this story and you want to make it seem believable, then there is no way I can go to school because I'm not at the level I should be with my other peers. You know, he feels like he just isn't on the level. Like he's not book smart at all. He doesn't think it'll work. And he thinks that's what's going to draw eyes and going to make people suspicious of him. Um, so he starts to beg Sonny for a job in the mob. And Sonny pretty much tells him, look, education is important. And he tells him, you're going to have to get a legit job. So we're going to, Car I already talked to Carly. Carly's going to put you on at the Metro Court. And Devin is like, hold on, like, should not be working at the warehouse. And he's like, look, if you wanted to be a part of the mob, the first step into getting into this business is following orders. So Dev decides to go to the Metro Court. I just thought about two people diego and juan these were two teenagers that came into port charles and wanted to work for sunny um you know juan that was his first thing you know juan he thought sunny was his dad that was lily's son he had a connection to juan you know and i'm kind of getting vibes off of this whole dev situation like sunny has a connection unexplained connection to dev it's one thing to want to help somebody out but to completely go out of your way for somebody like it speaks a lot so, so then we have scenes today with Nina and Jax. And Nina and Jax, basically Nina thanks Jax for saving uh, Obrecht. And then they get to talking about Hayden. And Nina wants to know Jax's connection with Hayden. And I thought, really, Nina? Like, why? Like, you just all have met Jax, what, if I had to sum it up, maybe a month or two ago. And now you're invested in his personal life? Like, so they decide to keep everything professional and not talk about each other's personal lives. And so then Jax gets a call. Nina wants to know who called him. And he's like, oh, remember we have to keep everything professional? So, you know, touche. Look like my cup. It's beautiful. This is my daughter's cup. Um, strawberry lemonade from Minute Maid. The bomb. My mouth is still salivating. Then Valentine shows up. And Valentine basically tells Nina to keep her eye on Jax. You know, because he feels like Jax is invested in Nina for personal reasons. Crimson was not the reason why he came to Port Charles. You know, and so then he starts to tell Nina that he has files on Valentin himself and uh, and Cassandra. And as we know, you know, Nina, like, tried to, to kill Cassandra and all this type of stuff. Like, to me, I think that Valentin does think that Jax is a threat, but... I'm knowing that he's trying to twist things to Nina because I think he feels like Jax, if anything, is a threat to their marriage. But to to Nina, of course, he's going to make it seem like Jax is a threat to her safety, to her freedom and all kinds of stuff. So to me, Valentine is always playing mind games on Nina, you know, in order to keep her where she's at. Look at what he's done with Sasha, making Nina think that 
Sasha is her daughter. You know what I'm saying? Like, he does mind games on Nina to keep her with him. And yeah, he loves Nina, but at the same time, does he think Jax will hurt Nina? No, I think he pretty much feels like Jax is a threat to their marriage, you know? And so Nina puts two and two together. Like, you have Curtis working for you to dig up information on Jax. And I was thinking the whole time because Jax was standing outside of the office, the Crimson office. I'm like, please do not let him walk in. Please do not let him walk in. I don't know why because I don't even like Valentine like that, but whatever. So then she decides to keep what she knows quiet because she was going to call Drew and fill Drew in on how Curtis is supposed to be working for Crimson and Jax, but he's actually undercover working for Valentine. But Valentine pretty much talks her out of it, so she decides to keep her mouth closed as usual. He can always, you know, and men are like that sometimes. They have a way of manipulation and this guy has got it good i mean he's a freaking castadine he's used to this you know and nina is no match because she's in love with this dude and love is blind so he, this man can bs her all the way through and tell her the freaking sky is pink and she will fall for it because she is in love we have scenes today with finn and hayden and they're at the metro court court still eating and chase shows up and he wants to question hayden regarding uh charges that could possibly be filed on obrick's behalf because obrick believes that hayden is the one that pushed her so they head down to the pcpd and chase is wondering what what's finn con finn's connection to hayden he really wants to know and so he asks finn and finn is like yeah that was my ex fiance and he just then he just goes to bat for hayden like look i know it looks bad but she would never she would never try to kill anyone she is so pro-life you know she puts up these walls those are her defense mechanisms she is very she's a good person underneath all that and so chase makes it his mission to find out the connection between Hayden and Finn and why Finn never mentioned her so he goes back in despite knowing that Hayden is innocent because he found evidence to exonerate her or to uh, alleviate her as a possible suspect he starts questioning her on Finn and is basically saying look you know I'll tell you what I know about Finn you tell me what you know and Hayden's like look I'm not saying nothing without my attorney because why Hayden is a smart woman. She, she's a smart woman. She ain't going, she is not going. So then we have scenes between Laura and Lulu. <sighs> Valentine shows up, he wants to see about custody of Charlotte and see if Charlotte can stay at Cassadine Island with him during the summer because he knows Lulu is dealing with a bunch of stuff with Dante. Lulu says no. You know, but then Laura and her get to talking about Dante and how much she misses Dante. And, you know, she just, she is losing hope regarding their marriage. So after she finishes talking with her mother, she goes and she sees Sunny. And she wants to ask Sunny to pretty much step in, intercede so that he can bring Dante home again because he did it the first time. So we don't know if Sonny's going to do that or not. But we'll see, um, I guess, on Monday what he's going to do about that. Laura gets a phone call. She steps away from the Metro Court um, table. And Dev sees a purse just sitting on the table. So what does he do? He tries to go and snatch it. And who shows up? Jason. baby she just want to be in the doggone video this is my cat sugar she's the cutest say hi sugar say hi hi yeah so go play baby jason is not feeling devin you guys like the way he looked at devin he's not feeling him so i guess we'll see what happens with these these two on monday like Jason did some definite warning Sonny of this kid, you know. He likes to swipe people's pockets and stuff like that. He's a thief, so 
you know, Jason's going to have his eye out because it's involving people that he really cares about. So, of course, he's going to make sure Dev is on the up and up. Sam and Jason, there was a warrant called for Shiloh's arrest. So, they headed to GH. And Matt going to say, I hope you guys don't think that I'm deputizing you. And Sam is like, look, none of that. We just want to ride along to be able to see this happen. Because this guy, he's plagued this town enough. He's bothered people that I am really close to. I have an invested interest in seeing this dude go down. So they head to General Hospital, right? We have scenes between Jordan and Curtis today. Jordan wants to hurry up and get back at work. She was at GH for a hospital appointment, just checking up on her kidney. Everything looks good with her kidney. You know, she is looking good herself i will say at the end of the day i still can do without jordan she serves no purpose to me but okay so then we have scenes between lucas and shiloh today guys they're at gh and shiloh gets his the dna results that he's been waiting for and he starts to talk lucas and basically tells lucas lucas uh yeah i'm gonna be a better father than you and brad can ever be and he wants Lucas to know he is coming for his son. And Lucas just gets fed up, you guys. And he jacks Shiloh up without a thought. And Jordan and Curtis rush to break things up. And so Shiloh's like, oh my gosh, I want this man arrested. And Jordan's just like, well, that's going to be pretty hard to do seeing how I'm not acting commissioner. And while he's trying to get Lucas locked up, Carmody came back and hit him so fast and Matt comes and was like uh we're here to arrest and Shiloh's looking like dang that was fast <laughs> and then Mac says we're here to arrest uh Henry Archibald and Shiloh's like oh why like what's going on and Sam is there Jason is there they're loving it you guys and so they're gonna knock him with he didn't got knocked with so many doggone charges extortion what else did they say sex coercion um possibly even murder so he is saying to Lucas you know what this is a setback for me but I will be coming to get my son and he looks over he sees Sam so he he starts to taunt Sam I've been waiting for this. You're going down. And Shiloh's like, I don't, I don't think so. It might look like I'm going down now, but I ain't going down without a fight. Trust and believe that. So he's still taunting. He's still being his narcissistic, arrogant self, his smug self. They also tell him basically he's going down because Lorraine end up snitching on him you know his right hand man without her he's nothing and he couldn't believe it he's like no harmony would never do that to me and they're like up oh, yep she did sorry and while uh, when they took him the envelope was still on the ground so sam retching got the envelope and gave it to lucas um we have scenes today with michael and willow michael is going to warn willow that shiloh is getting a DNA test on Wiley, right? But Willow hits him with good news. Like, oh, Shiloh, there's a warrant out for his arrest. He's going to get locked up. My mother did a complete 180. She is the mother that I seen a long time ago before we even met or even entered into DOD. And so she mentions that Harmony is cellmates with Nell. And Michael's like, oh, tell your mother don't believe anything that Nell has to say. She's a toxic woman. She wants to see me hurting, basically. And he starts to memorize that night that Nell handed him Jonah. And Willow says, I wish that I could bring Jonah back. Like, but no amount of pain would ever be able to, to fill that space that you have. And I'm just thinking, yeah. You will. You'll bring him back for sure because Wiley is not yours. He's actually Michael's. You just wait and see. Mm -hmm. So, it was ironic. But Michael just lets her know, like, it's over. Shiloh is going to get locked up. There's no way that the DNA test would ever hold up in court. Even if it does, it don't matter because the man is getting locked up. So, pretty much, poor Charles is happy that Shiloh is locked up. So, word is getting around. Um... 
Jordan is on the phone with Robert. He calls to fill her in. And then Curtis walks up. Of course, this girl, she can never stop doing her job when she's away from her job. But when she's at her job, she never does her job right. But okay, so she just wants to get back to work. Back to Maxie and Peter, you guys. The man, the WSB agent, goes in to tell Dante that he has guests here to see him. And basically, he comes back and he's like, oh, Dante says he doesn't care. He doesn't want to see you. He do not care. And Max is like, what? Like, no. So she, she doesn't want to take no for an answer. So what does she do? She barges in the room herself. And then all of a sudden, freaking... A gunshot goes off and it's like oh my god who shot who so I'm guessing because I haven't heard anything about Dominic Zambrania coming back to General Hospital what I'm guessing is either Dante shot the WSB agent or the WSB agent shot him or Dante shot himself those three things. I guess we'll see Monday. But Maxi yells, no, Dante. And then the episode goes off. So I just... I don't know what they're going to do with Dante. I'm guessing from uh, today's episode that they're possibly going to kill him off. But I just thought it would have been smarter to recast Dante. But, I mean, they recasted Jason. And Jason was a character that should have never been recasted. Like... And you mean to tell me you can't recast Morgan and Dante? It's beyond me. I, I don't know. I don't know where the writers are going with that. I mean, the writing has been superb this last week. But come on now. Like, y'all can't find nobody to play Dante's role? I don't know. It just kind of sounds kind of crazy to me. I really feel like Maxie should have just mind her own business. Like, Dante is not her husband, not her brother, not her cousin. He's no relation to her. She should have just mind her own business. Like, I get Lulu is her best friend and Dante is a good friend of hers and she wants to see their marriage successful and she even looks up to them. But she should have just butted and stayed out. Stayed out of it. You know, Dante, he really need he needed legit help. And Maxie's trying to butt her nose in it because she wants to bring Dante home. And the whole time I'm looking, it's like, I'm thinking like when they're at the WSB office headquarters, I'm like, what does she think she can say to Dante that Lulu hasn't already said to Dante? Why does she think Dante was going to want to see her out of all people before he even wants to see his wife? I just don't know. So we'll see what happens, you guys. Jax gets Hayden out of the PCPD. They go back to Crimson. And Jax is talking to Hayden. And like I thought, you guys, Hayden landed that kiss on Jax basically to show off. They're not even together. You know, she wanted to catch Finn's attention and she did just that. Like, it was just like Curtis and Elizabeth were saying. They know her. She did that stuff for the show. Excuse me. And so, um, Jax is basically like, get your head in the game. Like, I don't know why you let, why you even gave me that kiss you gave to me yesterday, but I knew you was doing that as um, a way to get Finn's attention. You need to do what we set out to do, and let's work on what we talked about, and you come to work, you know? And so, I guess she's going to be working for Crimson. And Nina finds out. And I don't think Nina too much likes that. But I guess we'll find out Monday. Um, so Hayden is, her position is, she's the new CFO of Crimson. She's going to be handling finances. She's more than qualified for this job. So I'm not surprised. On back to Sam and Lucas. Sam and Lucas is talking. And Lucas is just still worried that Shiloh will have some type of claim to Wiley. And Sam is just maintaining and keep on reminding him that Wiley is safe with him and Brad. And that everything is going to be okay. And Shiloh's being locked up. He's going to be going to jail for a while. Lucas is contemplating what to do with the results. And Michael shows up. And Michael pretty much tells him to throw the results away, rip them up, and they never have to even revisit that. And Sam is like, it doesn't matter if he rips them up, they're still on file here at GH, which is completely true. But my thing is, 
whole time I'm just like, no, open them up, open them up, open them. But they didn't. He ripped them up. I'm like, oh. So I'm I'm trying to figure out how they're going to find out that Jonah is actually Michael's. Like I'm wondering if they're gonna go the Harmony Nail route, where where Nail tells Harmony or it slips out. I don't know. One night when she's sleeping, she's dreaming, and Harmony tells Willow. I don't know. Like oh, my hair keeps messing up. I just don't know. I'm ready for this to be over. Let us know. Let Michael know, for God's sake. This guy's been grieving long enough. Just let him know. Um, that's the thing. Sometimes these writers, I feel like they don't know when to stop. They don't know when to end a storyline. Like, that's what they need to work on. Chase goes and he opens the the cell for Willow, lets her know that she's free. The judge has dropped all charges against her, you know, and Willow is happy they land a big kiss on each other. You know, they are just happy to be in each other's arms. Then Shiloh shows up and he pretty much threatens Willow and he tells her, look, it might look like I'm down and out now, but a new dawn will come and I will come for my son. And she looks horrified at him. You guys, let me know how you felt about today's episode. Today was good, even though it was kind of nerve-wracking because they have all these storylines that are getting on my nerves, like Wiley actually being Jonah, Shiloh. I'm like, I can do without these two storylines any freaking day, any given day. I'm so sick of it. Um, definitely, this Dante storyline is getting on my nerves. They either recast him or kill him off. They need to figure out what they're going to do. You guys, let me know what is getting on your nerves the most. What do you hate about GH? We always talk about the show we love so much, but let's talk about what we hate about them. And I guess that's all. If I miss anything, let me know in the comments below. You guys, I will see you later. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And Bye. I finally made my mind know that I can't go back broke. They saying that my time up, my back against the rope. I hustle got my grind.